Hey guys, welcome to the next lesson. So this is vertebrate life history, so amphibian ontogeny. Okay, so it's important for us to know how an organism develops in order for us to understand why certain morphological features have arisen. Okay, so part of knowing um, the organism well is, of course, to investigate its past. Okay, so now essentially what you have is you have an egg and a sperm and they meet the egg is fertilized and a zygote is formed and so now we will be dealing with the events that happen thereafter so the first one is cleavage okay of course there are different kinds of cleavage patterns so depending on the amount of yolk present okay so there's what we call holoblastic cleavage which means that cleavage is undergone by the entire zygote okay such as in this first row of uh, the first row of illustrations here okay so cleavage is undergone by the entire zygote okay now next is meroblastic cleavage which means that it's just partial cleavage okay which means that only a certain portion of the zygote is dividing okay and the reason why we have holoblastic and meroblastic cleavage is essentially because of the amount of yolk that you or that it is contained inside the zygote okay so if there is a small amount of yolk which means that it is microlesethal then that means that you're going to get more or less a holoblastic cleavage okay also the same for mesolesethal eggs but for mesolesethal eggs what happens usually is that cell division is a lot slower in the part that has more yolk okay so for mesolesethal that means there's a moderate amount of yolk and for macrolesethal that means there's a large amount of yolk okay so now let's try to ask ourselves why why is there a small moderate and large amount of yolk in different organisms anyway okay so let's first ask so yolk what is yolk okay yolk is nutritive substance okay so it's the source of nutrition of your zygote when it is away from the parent now you will notice that for eggs with very small amount of yolk or zygotes with small amount of yolk okay you will see these animals eutherian mammals mammals that more or less develop in the placenta so that means that they grow in the womb okay so if you are taking your nutrition from your mother then there's no need for you to have yolk okay because basically you're getting it from your mom anyway okay now for amphioxus you might think well it lays eggs so how come there's a small amount of yolk it's because the development of amphioxus is relatively fast okay so it develops quickly so that's why it can manage with a small amount of yolk okay now for mesolesethal eggs or moderate amount of yolk so you have amphibians for example so you will notice that for example tadpoles I mean amphibians in general or let's say your toad it undergoes a larval stage or your tadpole stage so let's just say yolk is like the gasoline okay it's how far it can get you in the stage of development because there's a moderate amount of yolk okay so for example in the toad it's able to take the organism halfway and it says okay there's not enough yolk so you're going to have to stop at this stage so you're gonna be a tadpole and now you're gonna have to feed yourself in order to grow and develop further into the adult amphibian okay so that's what it is now for macrolesethal eggs that simply means that you have more gasoline to get by and so the journey through life you know you can go farther and so that's why you will notice that usually for birds oh, sorry fishes birds reptiles when they hatch from their eggs they look like miniature adults okay so because they've had a lot more yolk with them so they have a lot more gasoline and so their journey in life you know is a lot longer essentially their development it's um, the yolk was able to take them further down the road of development okay there so now we will investigate amphibian 
develop it. Okay, so it's important to know that for amphibians, there is holoblastic cleavage, and that there is a moderate amount of yolk. Okay, so for cleavage, so this is what happens. So essentially, of course, because the yolk is dense, it will tend to settle at the cells in the bottom. All right, such that you will form two poles: your animal pole and your vegetal pole. Okay. So of course, because yolk is denser, so that means that the cells that hold the yolk will divide a lot slower than the cells in the animal pole. Okay. And because the cells in the animal pole divide a lot faster, you know, the series of cell divisions eventually leads to what we call blastulation. Okay? Or the formation of the blastocele. So this cavity right here is the blastocele. And see these are the cells in the animal pole, so they are called the micromeres, and the cells in the vegetal pole, okay, they are larger, so they are called the macromeres, okay, so from cleavage to blastulation, okay. Now after that, so after blastulation, you will eventually proceed to gastrulation. So gastrula, so from the word gastro means stomach, Okay, so this is the stage where we form the gut, okay? And this is also the stage where, essentially, you will be forming the three main germ layers of your organism. Your ectoderm, your mesoderm, and your endoderm, okay? So if we look at a surface view, so what happens is the cells in the animal pole, they rapidly divide such that they somehow envelop the entire vegetal pole, okay? So they are somehow pushing the vegetal pole inside. That's what's happening, okay? And so there is what we call an invagination, okay? So the cells divide, move in this general direction, they push inside, such that they're now forming a new cavity, which is your archenteron or your gastrocele, okay? And the hole that is formed, okay? is called the blastopore. Okay? So because the direction of division, so this is called epiboly, where the cells begin to divide. So there are two ways, so that's why your blastopore is said to have two lips, the dorsal lip and the ventral lip. Okay? Until it becomes this one during late gastrula, okay? such that the vegetal, the cells in the vegetal pole, they're all inside. Okay, that becomes your future endoderm, and then the the cells that have migrated inside, you know, from outside, they divide, 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 they migrate inside. That becomes your mesoderm, and the outermost cells that becomes your ectoderm. Okay, so this is early gastrula. So you have here the formation of the dorsal lip of the blastopore, and then this part that contains the cells that will eventually become your mesoderm. So currently this is still the blastocele, right? But as we move, as we proceed to mid gastrula, you will notice there is your blastopore. There is also the ventral lip. So now the vegetal pole is being pushed inside, okay? And the blastocele is slowly being pushed aside to make way for the archenteron or the gastrocele. And then for late gastrula, okay, so this is essentially now the archenteron or your gastrocele, and this is what's left of the blastocele, okay, and then eventually this is the yolk plug, and then you have the dorsal and the ventral lip of the blastopole, okay. Yeah. So after gastrulation, you now have neurulation, the formation of your nervous system essentially okay so we will take a sagittal view of your egg okay of your zygote so you, again epiboly okay so this part that's the archenteron okay so the cells here that will be your future that's the mesoderm right okay right there okay now what happens is while all of this is forming, so this one, the cells that have moved inside, is now called the corda mesoderm. 
or the chordomesoderm, because it will eventually become the notochord. Okay? And the cells above that, they will begin to thicken and flatten. So divide, divide, okay, and then it'll flatten like this to form the neural plate. And while that's happening, so for the so this is the chordomesoderm. So now this is the cross section. Okay? And this one is a longitudinal section. Okay? So now and then of course this is your archenteron. Okay? So for your chordomesoderm, this is it, and then eventually some parts will migrate, it will start migrating. Okay? The mesodermal cells will start migrating downward. Okay? And then for the ectodermal cells, so they're going to start thickening here to form the neural plate. And then it will start to pinch off, alright, form the neural groove. And then the, they'll eventually join together. And then the hole that they will form is a neural seal. And this will eventually be the dorsal hollow nerve cord. So now, while all that is happening, the cells of the mesoderm are also migrating downward. Okay, to form the different parts of your mesoderm. Now, for the mesoderm, that's a bit tricky. So you have um, the epimere, as you can see, and there's the mesomere, or the intermediate mesoderm, and then there's also the lateral mesoderm, which will divide into the somatic and the splanchnic layers. Okay, so in the course of development, different organs and different tissues will arise from these different parts of the mesoderm. Okay? So, there. so now uh, these are some of the slides that you will expect to see, or that you should have seen. Okay? So that's the neural plate. Okay? This is the endoderm. Okay? And then this is your archenteron. Okay? And then this is essentially the lateral plate mesoderm that's beginning to divide this way. And then eventually, this is the formation of the neural groove, and then it will eventually close to form the neural seal. As of this point, gas relation has ended. Okay, so now that's it. So this is a summary of how it will look like for your toad. So first, it's fertilized, and so you form the gray crescent, which is essentially the area where the sperm has entered. Okay, you will divide, divide, divide. A lot slower in the part where there's yolk. Okay, a lot faster in the animal pole. Okay, and then this is this is it. Okay, cleavage, and then eventually that's it. Okay, as you can see, blastopore is forming, late gastrula. There's the yolk plug. Okay, so this one, the blastopore, is essentially that is the butthole because we are deuterostomes, and so it is the anus that forms first. And so while that's happening. You know, eventually the cells begin to pinch. All right, so this this begins to form the, the neural plate, and there's the neural folds. Okay, and then eventually that will be your zygote. Okay, so when just remember for gastrulation, as it invaginates, it's forming. Just imagine it's forming a tube. Okay, it's like you have a ball, and then you're trying to form or insert a tube through that ball. Okay, so you so that your embryo is forming longitudinally. Okay, so it's a bit confusing to visualize, but hopefully it's there. Okay, so for example, well for your ectoderm, oh my god, it's cut. Okay, so there are different parts here. Okay, so you have your epidermal ectoderm, your neural plate ectoderm, and your neural crest. Okay, so those are the different parts, and they will have eventually their destinies okay what will they become in the future it's all here it's summarized in all of these pictures or in this um, diagram okay and the same thing for the mesoderm so remember that for your mesoderm you have the corda mesoderm in the middle right it begins to divide laterally so you have your epimere and then eventually you have the mesomere and then eventually you have the lateral plate mesoderm right here, right? So, for your epimere, that mostly becomes the limbs, okay? And then for the intermediate mesoderm, that mostly becomes the kidneys. 
Now for your lateral plate mesoderm, so you have the somatic, which is the outer one, and the splanchnic, which is closer to the endoderm. Okay. So for the somatic mesomere, it's mostly those are the gonads, and then for the splanchnic mesoderm, it's most usually the blood vessels and the circulatory system. And then of course, for the ones that used to hold the yolk, so those are the cells of the endoderm, so they will form mostly your gut. Okay, there. So that's a nutshell summary of amphibian development. So these are the references. So though most of the images were taken from Cardong, and also a few of the images were taken from Hickman, and of course the others were taken from the World Wide Web. So thank you very much for making these photos available. And to everyone, thank you for watching.